Last episode, we made the rather contentious decision to appoint this man as our new manager in the DOF save, Diego Simeone, on his villain arc. He's spurned and he's angry after being sacked by Paris Saint-Germain, and he's taken up the job at Paris FC to try and try and lead us in the French Revolution. That's the narrative anyway. Some of you loved it. Some of you were a little bit sceptical. I'm hoping in today's video I can continue to win you around if you need it. Let's have a look at how Diego Simeone has been doing. So yes, it was a pretty inauspicious start for Simeone in his first game in the last episode, right? We played the Trophy de Champion in France. It's the Super Cup or the Community Shield. And uh, we played Monaco. Monaco, who we know are really good, but... um. They, uh, they battered us 3-1. And uh, Simeone's new reign, his new tenure, uh, didn't start in the best of circumstances. But since here, since here I've made a lot of progress. I've moved us all the way through until January, watching over Simeone as he takes the reins. And I'm going to bring you hopefully some news, some positive news, I should say, at that. In maybe there are some shoots of life in this Simeone decision. Maybe we won't regret releasing... Slash sacking. I've tried to use a better word than sacking there, haven't I? Than sacking Gooty, who I know some of you were upset about. Some of you were livid, up in arms, shouting, cheat! Um, but then again, those people aren't here anymore. So um, you guys who are watching right now, you're the real OGs. I appreciate you. Thank you for sticking with it. Even if you're still a bit sceptical, hopefully today can maybe continue to win you around. Because since this horrible first game here, where, I mean, we took the lead, actually, didn't we, with Halset Naipan? Then their back eight or whatever they play here at uh, Monaco did kind of keep us quiet and they scored three goals. They won the cup and um, Simeone looked like, well, I looked like a bit of a fool. Let's be honest. After that, though, this is what he's done. He has gone on some run, to be honest. In fact, the very next game, we can always rely on Brest. It's what we always say in this series, isn't it? Um, he beat them 10-1. Like, I quite, like... If there was ever a result to say, okay, this might be, um, this made me think maybe it is a bit cheaty because, you know, this is a little bit overpowered. He's playing a 4-2-3-1. Simeone led us to a 10-1 win against Brest, but actually it might not be quite as overpowered as you might be thinking here because there were some, some worse results than this, but 10-1, 29 shots, 16 on target, and we scored 10 of them with an XG of 4.94, but scoring 10 from that was outrageous. Kusia Sari scored five starting up front. We had two from Naipan starting on the left wing, which is new. I don't think on the left-hand side was something that Guti was doing for Naipan. And yeah, um, this was good. Also, just to show you as well, there is one new player in there. Since the end of last episode, I did go and sign Adam Asnu as a left-back cover for, actually not too much, £3 million. I think he's brilliant. I think he's really, really good for £3 million. Some of you were a little bit questioning, is that, you know, that's the verb, of my transfer business. Because I spent so much on the big players that I signed, we had to kind of bring in new players as backups. They are kind of like for like, considering the players that went out. But those players that went out were unhappy. The ones that have come in are now full of life and new. So it's still worth doing in my head. Adam Asnu is an example of that who came off the bench here and played quite well, actually. Let's have a look at these other results then. After beating Brest 10-1, we're doing well. We aren't winning every single game 10-1. And we are third in the league. Now... This is an, in, an improvement over Guti, isn't it? It's the 21st of January today. And in today's video, we are going to play a game against uh, Le Havre away from home to show you Simeone's football in action. You can, we'll, we'll watch them in a live com and then we'll really analyse how the team is playing. But to sum up where we are right now, we are 18 games in on 40 points. We are five points off the top, which is small progress, but is actually kind of progress on Guti's season before last season. Like last season, he finished, was it fifth? This season, we are above that. We are, I think, in a title race. Although Monaco are just proving to be really, really good. They've only lost once and then only drawn three times. Lon, uh, Ren and Rantz uh, there, Stad de Rantz. And then they also lost to PSG, who beat them. Our dropped points game so far are, are we lost to Monaco at home. They're just good. They seem to have our number. They play this really, they got so many players back and... We play quite attacking, obviously, with the 4-2-3-1. And I, they just kind of nullify us and then beat us. They beat us 1-0. We also, lo also lost at home to Toulouse. So it's not completely infallible, this Simeone system. 
However, it can produce some outrageous results, as I'm going to show you in a second. We've drawn a few games. We drew to PSG away from home. That's progress, I think. That's a good result away. We've drawn to Ren. We've drawn to Strasbourg and to Lyon as well. 1-1s one in most of those. 2-2 two, two away at Ren. Then we've won 12 games. And have a look at some of the results here. In terms of the wins, that 10-1, a 7-0 against today's opponents, who they did have a red card towards the end, but 7-0. I'm hoping we can score some goals. Hat-trick, by the way, from Vinicius Tobias. What a player. Our right back, Vinicius Tobias, no less, is just scoring hat tricks. One of them was a penalty, but what a player. Love him. Uh, we beat Troy's 3-1 there, but look, I'm showing you the big results. Europa League, 7-0 win there, 4-1 win there. A 5-1 win against Luzerne, maybe that's more expected. An 8-1 win in the French Cup. I mean, Olympique Saint-Quintin are um, not exactly like difficult opponents. We beat Brest away from home. You can always rely on Brest. 4-0 against Cholet. We won 2-1 against Benabache there. There's the kind of like... The kind of worst spell was October, where we drew three of our six games, lost one of them too. Only two wins, and that was in the Europa League against Dortmund. Great win, by the way, against Dortmund. And then a 1-0 win against Lille. Results-wise, this team is cooking. If we have a look at how, like, it all... Uh, this screen's quite good for this. We've got Leonardo scoring goals with 18. Vinicius Tobias, that right-back who... I don't think he was on many people's radars as a right-back, but I, I cannot talk highly enough about him. I love him. He's so good. I mean, I really urge you to go and check him out in your save. I think he starts at Shakhtar and you can get, I got him for 4.9 million and now look at the, the performances he's putting in. By the way, playing in a system that is just basically a 4-2-3-1 under an AI manager. So these, if you're using him, I feel like you can get even better. I'm even better than a 7.49. Love him. Really, really good. Um, I mean, even in his attributes, he doesn't look superb like he looks very solid doesn't he but like only the two green attributes on my system here which is pace and acceleration it can carry you a long way those physicals we know can carry you a long way in the game can't they uh most assists is Isaac Johannesson back into the team with a bang this year he's wanted by the way our team pretty much the entire team is wanted at the moment this is a result of doing quite well but have a look at how many players are wanted by other teams right now also, some big news that you might be able to see at the top there. Lots of you have been saying about LaFont. Wait, maybe we need to sell him. Some of you have been saying that you agree with me to stick with him. Or maybe it's time to move him on. I've decided to let him go. He's going to go and join Al Riyadh in uh, the Saudi League on a free transfer. His contract was running out. And when he wanted a new contract, he wanted loads. I was like, he's 29. I think it's time to move on from LaFont. He's been a great servant. 116 games so far. And... I mean, he's actually conceded 138 in that. Only conceded 80 and that can't be right. Surely he didn't concede 80 goals in 203 for Nantes in six years. Considering he's conceded 138 and 116 for us. That seems... That can't be right. Uh, maybe it is. Uh, may, uh, no, it's not. It's because it's counting these years where they've actually not got the stats on there. Look, that, that makes more sense. That makes me feel better about our defence. He's going to move on. And then we have the likes of Silla, wanted by Man City, Man United. Maybe something to consider if they put big money up for him. He's really good, though. I think he's our captain, actually, as well, isn't he? Uh, Lenny's a bit... Lenny? <laughs> Lenny Yori's a little bit upset that uh, I've not let him move with some interest from other teams. Johannesson's wanted by Man U. Uh, Van Veek. I hope I'm saying that correctly now. I was corrected by some South Africans. Great. I'm trying to loan him out to a team that's actually going to start him, though, because he's great. Not quite a starter here yet, but many people who are trying to loan him won't give me the the promise to use him. It's like fringe player most of the time. Manu Kone is wanted by Arsenal. Andy Juice wanted by Villa. Diaz is wanted on some loans. Bruni Bardi is wanted by Real Madrid. That could be interesting. Something to consider. Krupi is wanted by Bayer Leverkusen. Nicola, uh, Nicolas Lopez. I am going to loan out to either Atalanta or Wolves, I think. He's not played loads. Three starts, two goals in that time. Very good player. Lots of potential, but not a starter yet. And uh, Marcus Leonardo wanted by Man U and Tottenham. I mean, that could be something to consider as well. Overall though, this team, this 11 is, is making me believe if we win our game in hand over PSG, we go within two points of those and then we'll still be, well, we'll be, we'll have played an extra game to Monaco. They're going to be maybe the, their title favorites at the moment. They could go three points clear at the top. I mean, and then even further away from us. Look, it's, it's a situation we're going to have to monitor, but I think there are signs that we can do this as well as in the Europa League. In the Europa League, look at how he's doing. He's played seven games, Simeone, and won seven games. We're top of our Europa League group. We are going for the Europa League this year. This side, this 11 we've put together, is strong. 
we can do this. And today we're hopefully going to prove it by going into a game with Le Havre, who are 15th. We're away from home. And if we can beat them, we'll be really, really cooking, won't we? Let's get ourselves up to that game, which is at five o'clock. Pick the, well, not, not pick the team, but show you who we might go with, show you some of the stats on players and uh, get into that game. Okay, so it is now officially match time at five o'clock on in the evening on a Sunday in January 2029 here. And it's time for Simeone to pick his 11. I thought we'd just have a look at the players because I think you like this screen. I like looking at this screen anyway to kind of see how those players are doing. I wish I could see the, uh, we're not going to go through this right now, the assists on here. But I just kind of wanted to show you how the players are performing and who's likely to be in Simeone's best 11. So in goal, Lafont has been the goalkeeper with his 25 appearances so far. He's leaving. Still three appearances for rest there, but I just don't think he's going to be good enough. He is making some improvements. Should we kind of like see what FM can do? I just wonder what his potential ability is even going to be now. Or do I need to go and sign a new goalkeeper? Let me know in the comments, I suppose. I think probably signing a new goalkeeper is smart there, but it would have been nice if that actual plan that we had would have come to fruition, but I don't think it will. Right back we know is going to be Vinicius Tobias, although he might not start him because he's looking like he's a little bit lacking in match sharpness he's passed the fitness test but might not start we'll see what he does at right back but he's our best one if not it will be the the new guy uh, adam asnu who will come in actually he can play left side and right side um it will be at right back if not uh it'll be mendy won't it rather than uh than asnu mendy is very good he's played five times hasn't had to play loads because tobias has played loads but he's handy at right back and then we'll leave him in because i think the uh, he might not play because of the fitness issues at center back this has been interesting so far this year. Silla is a first pick, it seems, at left-sided centre-back. He's played 19 times. Right-sided centre-back has kind of been a bit rotating between Yoro and Michelotti. Michelotti has played a lotty more than I was expecting um, when bringing him in. He's either-footed wonder kid, but I can kind of see why he's playing loads. He only signed for £6 million and has turned into a bit of a bargain. He's kind of grabbed the shirt from Lenny Yoro at the moment. So 23 appearances from him. I reckon it might be him starting, but I guess we will see. Left-sided centre-back is or will be Parente, who's actually lacking in fitness too. So it could well be Asnu. We will see when he does pick his team. We've got two defensive midfielders. I've just put a clean slate 4 2 3 one. You've seen this before in here. These will rotate and be slightly different lots of the time, but it's Johansson and Kone seem to have the shirts as the, 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 more, the deeper midfielders in here with Andy Juf on the bench with... Players like Diaz, definitely nowhere really near it. Naipan, Telehovsky has played two times this year. Naipan's got 15, but from other positions. Diaz only one sub appearance and Juve's got seven starts, so does often play. Um, let's fill in the other ones. Krupi seems to be starting every game at number 10. Leonardo as the striker is a first choice. He's got 18 in 24 games. Look, he's very, very good. Kusiasari, still not starting, but 13 goals. We saw he got five in that first game of the season after, you know, the first proper game of the season we looked at. Bargy from the right-hand side usually gets the pick. And also, Zhao Rego from the left usually gets the pick if you have a look at their appearances. Some players on the bench here that play a lot. Naipan, not necessarily a starter, but can easily fit in ahead of Johansson, who's only played 13. Look, he's rotating. We've also got Yoro's played 13. Then the rest are kind of subs and do rotate a little bit. So I'd expect something like this. It'll either be Naipan or it will be... Uh, how we just looked Johansson in there, but we will see. I'm going to unpick these now, clear that team selection. We're going to go across to Watching Man, our favourite very strange human being. Uh, there he is, look. In fact, did we get a good picture of him there? Look, there's our, there's our man, uh, <laughs> Watching Man. We will make sure if we go to Paris FC that we're going to go and watch this, this match here. Make sure he is attending. I think he is already. He is. He's attending this match. I'm going to go and make sure that we then continue with Watching Man, and I will see you in the game. Okay, here we are then. Into the match we go. The players are warming up. This guy's doing some lovely little heel touches there as he runs forward. Let's head into the match preview and find out these 11s. The Le Havre team is, has a new gen striker, uh, has some players that don't have faces according to that right there. This is what we're interested in though. Our team is Leonardo, Krupi, Bargi, Rego, Johansson, Naipan. Okay, so no Manu Kone in this team is an interesting choice. It's Johansson and... Naipan as the defensive midfielders or those deeper midfielders in there. So that's an interesting choice. Kone is linked with Manchester United at the moment. I wonder if it's, it's probably not something to do with that, is it? Because that would be my job. Um, I didn't see the defence, but I think Asnu did start rather than 
Um, the uh, because of, rather than Tobias, I think it will be or Parente on that left hand side. Yeah, it's on the left hand side as new. So no Parente. I wonder if he's done the same with Tobias. Both of them were lacking in fitness a little bit, weren't they? Here's Leonardo early on though to score the opening goal. I am telling you, I am telling you, we're gonna wipe the floor with them because this Simeone team in full. In full flow is really something to behold. It's Asnu who wins the ball back. He gives it Johansson, moves it to Nipan, straight through the middle. Look, we cut them open. Leonardo is, is a real improvement on our team, actually. We wanted that clinical striker. Marcus Leonardo is that guy. To be honest, right now, it's how long can we hold on to him because he's very, very good. Uh, I think we all know that he's very good on FM, don't we? Here's Asnu on this left-hand side. He's going to move all the way across the box and then shoot, and it is saved by the goalkeeper. Fourth minute, we've had two decent shots on goal there, haven't we? There it is. Two on target as well. Uh, it is Mendy at right back, as I predicted then. So he has rested both fullbacks in this one. And Manu Kone also is missing completely. Perhaps that's because of an injury then. Although we didn't see the injury on the screen, did we? So he's not even in the, in the squad, Manu Kone. That's curious. I wonder why that is. There's also a few players that are like youngsters on here. Like Fafana and Lalu. Uh, Juf is on the bench. Yeah, there's no sign of Manu Kone anywhere. Curious. Here we have a corner, which we have been good from. There's Silla winning the header. That's going to be keeper's ball. I've given them the big build-up now. If if uh, Le Havre can go forward and uh, score some goals and make us look silly here, that would be an idea. It doesn't look like they're going to. They're booting it back to our defence, and it's just collected by Silla. Here's Asnu. Lafont in goal. Michelotti did get the shout ahead of Lenny Oro at right centre-back, as we expected to. Is the Real Madrid linked Rooney Bargi? Do we at some point take one of these big offers for one of our players to reinvest it? Although, do we have the money anyway? As Adam Asnu, the backup left back, you guys said these backups are not very good. I know you didn't actually see this guy, did you? Scores to make it 2 0 inside this first half. We are rampant. Actually, it will be interesting to have a look at the roles of these players in this 4 2 3 1. Are they different from the ones that I guessed before with a ball winning midfielder, etc.? Asnu smashes it in. He's definitely playing like a wing back from this left-hand side, isn't he? He's got forward loads here. It, yeah, it's two DMs, look. I think we've seen this before, the two DMs with the inside forwards. It's quite quite run-of-the-mill, isn't it? It's two DMs, an attacking midfielder, and an advanced forward, but it seems to work. The way that he sets this team up, we are looking like we might even go 3-0 up in the first half if we can take this chance, this highlight. Johansson, Jalrego, Michelotti, Nipan passing it around. Here's Mendy, the other replacement fullback. Nipan good football. Johansson might be it is. It's 3-0. 3-0 before half time. Those two deeper midfielders combining to get us our third goal. And I did pick this game. It was the first game. It's the first league game back in January. I picked it because I thought it would be a good way to showcase how good this team is playing under Simeone. How much of an improvement it actually is than some of the football we were playing with Guti, which at times was good. But this is another level. It really, truly is another level. It, I, I think this is the type of situation now where we might be able to challenge the likes of Monaco and PSG. And we might be able to go far in Europe and maybe try and win that Europa League this year. Because we have so much talent in the squad. And we still have a bit of money to spend. One thing that did develop, by the way, and uh, Tom, if you pop this on the screen here, we did get news that our, our owner, Johan Dumont, is scaling back his his uh, investment in the club. He's not going to be giving us as much money going forward. He will still invest, he says, but not as much as before. So maybe we won't have those big transfer budgets as, that was a good save from Lafont there, just to cut back to the game for a second. So something we do need to consider, I think we'll still make healthy money because we're going to be in the Europa League, hopefully the Champions League after this season. So you kind of generate money and revenue that way anyway, don't you? Is he onside? He looked like he might be off. He is offside. There we go. We are approaching the hour mark and I am approaching the time where I'm expecting changes. There is a change. Nicolas Lopez, the uh, the wonder kid right winger, the Argentinian that Simeone signed, is on the pitch. I think that's him as well. Yeah, he's on this free kick with his long hair look. Slightly grey long hair. He's going to go for it and uh, he's actually hit the crossbar from quite a long way out there. He is a talent, not played loads, and I think I am going to loan him out, but he's actually brought him onto the pitch here. Maybe I need to reconsider that loan then. If he's going to play him, I don't mind keeping him here, but... Before this, he hadn't played him loads. I think that will be the end of this highlight, won't it? We've got half an hour to play. Let's see if we can add to our, our three goals here and really run rampant. Maybe it won't be the 10-1 that we saw against Brest, but it's... Okay, they've actually scored. That highlight from us hitting the crossbar has ended with them scoring a goal to make it 3-1. I mean, imagine they make the comeback from here. I, I hope they do not. It's actually a very simple goal as well. Sabi just picks it up and runs around... 
The uh, the left back that we've looked at a lot today, Asnu. It's gone through LaFont's legs as well, though, which is um maybe another pointer that we need to replace our goalkeeper. Any other changes from us? No. It is... Oh, there's another one. Nipan's gone left wing and Telehovsky's on and Juf is on. So two changes in the midfield and uh, Nipan's moved forward. So no Manu Kone, but he's still going to use Juf and Telehovsky, who are both very solid, aren't they? Yoro's on as well, actually, at right centre-back. Uh, Michelotti's come off too. So he's made a whole host of changes, actually. Obviously confident that we're going to see this game out, which we have done. 3-1 win. I'm telling you Simeone is good. Also... Just because I remembered it now and it really doesn't go with what was just happened. But also Cristiano Ronaldo has got his Continental C license and is now studying for his Continental B license. So a succession plan in place maybe with the managers. Right now though, that takes us to within five points of the top. We're all on the same games now. PSG have won. They must have played earlier. And Monaco also have won. Uh, in fact, PSG had already played, hadn't they? We had a game in hand over them. And Monaco have won their game 1-0 against Strasbourg. Like, just a 1-0 win. Keeps them five points clear. Keeps us, though, well clear of fourth in these Champions League places. If we finish Champions League first season with Simeone, I think that's good. If we can really challenge these for the title, that's even better. I'm going to go and get us to the end of the season now, where I'm hoping there's going to be a Europa League run-in that we might be able to go and play a watch as live comes at the end of the, in the next video. Hopefully there's a title challenge to put into that. Maybe it'll be a bumper edition. I'm aiming for two videos this week. Tuesday, which is today as you're watching this, and hopefully Thursday too, if things go our way with uh, recording and things. Because it feels like, in terms of videos on the channel right now, it's the DOF save that most of you seem to want to say. I put a, a different video out and people are like, where's the next DOF video? I get it. Let's try and do two this week. Thank you so much for being here, continuing to be here. I just love playing this save and just kind of chatting you through it. It's quite... I love it. It's a good fun save. Thank you for engaging with it. Thank you for being here. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Please like the video because it does really help to, uh, to push the video out into the algorithm, which we've had a few issues with recently because of putting live streams on the channel. But anyway, you don't need to know all that. The thing you need to know is have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Up the Simeone.